Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to show you a way that you can fool your muscles and your brain as I explore the floating arms experiment. Let's check it out. <music> Muscle contractions is how we move our bodies, more specifically when the skeletal muscles, that's muscles attached onto our bones, contract. When you wish to raise your arm, your brain will create that message and send it as a signal through the nervous system to the muscles of your arm, telling them to contract and therefore your arm will raise, and this is a voluntary muscle contraction. There are also involuntary muscle contractions, such as sneezing, or when you reach out and touch something hot and your arm immediately pulls your hand away from it before any pain is registered. Involuntary muscle contractions can help keep us safe, but there are also less than ideal involuntary muscle contractions, such as muscle spasms. You can also overcome involuntary muscle contractions, such as when you feel a sneeze coming and you're able to hold it in, or if you choose to reach out and touch something hot, your brain can overrule the signal and have you hold on to that hot item until you pull your hand away from the pain. Being able to overcome involuntary muscle contractions had scientists wondering what is going on in the brain. Is it blocking the signal of the involuntary muscle contraction, or is it sending out a new signal telling the muscles to do something different? I'm going to show you a very simple activity that you can do to explore involuntary muscle contractions. What you want to do is stand in a door frame like I am now and press the backs of your hands hard against the door frame and hold that position for around 60 seconds. Then you're going to step forward with your arms relaxed and see if anything weird happens. This is your chance to pause the video and try this experiment for yourself and then come back for the explanation before you see the results of me doing the experiment. If nothing weird happens when you try it, you might need to press the backs of your hands harder against the door frame or hold that position for longer. If you have short arms, you might need to try this with just one arm being pressed against the door frame. Right, so hopefully you've paused it and given it a go. So let's see what happens with my arms when I step out of the door frame with my arms relaxed. And you'll notice that my arms are now floating up the side of me. By turning my arms slightly and then relaxing them again, they can raise up more in front of me rather than to the side. But this is an involuntary muscle contraction. I am not actually trying to raise my arms. Now that you've tried that one, let's try it a wee bit differently. This time you're going to stand in the door frame and press the palms of your hands hard against the door frame and hold that position for 60 seconds. What do you think is going to happen when I step forward and relax my arms this time? Again, this is your chance to pause the video and try this for yourself and then come back and see if what happened to you is what was expected. Again, if nothing weird happened, you might need to press harder with the palms of your hands or hold that position for longer. So now, hopefully you've paused it and come back to the video, or if not, hopefully you've made a prediction about what you think will happen. So I'm going to step forward with my arms relaxed and let's see what happens. This time you'll notice that my arms are floating up in the way towards me and making a sort of cross in front of me. This is because I've used different muscles so they're pulling the arms in the opposite direction rather than carrying on with the outward push that I had going on. So what is actually happening in this experiment? Well this is called the Konstam phenomenon and it's named after the German neurologist Oskar Konstam who described this phenomenon in 1915. What's happening is you are initially creating a voluntary contraction of the muscles by reaching out and pressing hard against something, so you're holding that voluntary contraction for a prolonged period of time. Once you relax the muscles, that voluntary contraction carries on, the signal is still being sent to your brain, so it is fooling the muscles in the brain into carrying on with this contraction, raising your arms either up beside you or up across in front of you, depending on how you were pushing your hands against the door frame. If you try this experiment pressing your hands against the door frame, then step forward and hold the position straight for a couple of seconds before relaxing, see if you feel anything weird about trying to hold your arms in a straight position, and see whether your arms still float up after they've been held straight for a couple of seconds, and you can also experiment to see how long you need to hold them straight to be able to stop the involuntary contraction from happening. When you are doing that with your muscles, 
telling them to force themselves to be straight against that involuntary contraction, what scientists have discovered is that the brain is blocking the involuntary signal rather than sending out a new signal. This might seem like just a bit of fun and a very weird feeling that you get when you do it, and it's a fun thing for the whole family to try, but it does actually have real world implications because there are illnesses out there such as Parkinson's disease which involve involuntary muscle contractions. So if scientists can figure out what is happening in the brain to deal with involuntary muscle contractions, they may be able to find ways to help people who suffer with illnesses like Parkinson's disease minimise these involuntary muscle contractions and lessen the impact of this illness on their life. So although it is a bit of fun science and it looks and feels really fun, there are some really serious real world implications. There is still a lot that we don't understand about the brain, but as populations are living longer due to medical advances, there are going to be more people suffering from illnesses which affect the brain or affect muscle contractions which, as we've just explored, have their root in the brain with signals either being blocked or sent out. This can be things such as Parkinson's, dementia and Alzheimer's. If you want to know more about the brain, keep an eye out on this channel for my upcoming video 10 Things You Should Know About The Brain. There are other fun things that you can do with this experiment, such as when you first step forward and your arms are floating up, have somebody time how long it takes for the involuntary contractions to stop and your arms to return to normal. You can also try pressing either harder or gentler against the doors and see what effect that has. You can press for longer times or lesser times. You can even try just pressing one hand against the door frame or even try pressing your leg out against the door frame. If you do try it with your leg, just be prepared to grab onto the door frame or have very good balance if your leg starts floating up into the air. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demo and explanation videos I do here to my 10 things you should know about series where that video about the brain will be appearing and here to my series on 100 scientists who influenced the world. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring the floating arms experiment.